Good afternoon, viewers of Seven News Television. This is your program, The Experts. Most of times, people find the youths moving around the streets. They don't know what to do. They don't know where to go. They don't know who to advise them. But there is something very important, that if youths are not gathered together, if they are not sensitized, they are not trained, they are going to be outcasts or useless people in our society. The reason why it is advisable for each institution or government to put in place organizations that take care of the youths. Cameroon is an example of a country that has put in place the National Youth Observatory, an organization that caters for the youths and within the organization, there is a program known as a special three-year youth plan. You know, it is only an expert, a specialist, working with the youths who can tell us more about this organization, the National Youth Observatory. With us today is the head of Department of Information and Sensitization of the National Youth Observatory. He is no other person than Mr. Ivan Eta Ojang. Good afternoon, Mr. Ivan. Good afternoon, Ms. Ong. How are you today? I'm good. Uh, so, who is Mr. Ivan? Um, Mr. Eta Ojang Ivan is um, a Cameroonian um, trained in the National um, Youth and Sports Institute as a senior youth and national counselor. Okay. And um, I hold the post of um, the head of department of information sensitization and intermediation in the National Youth Observatory. We are talking on the role of the National Youth Observatory in Cameroon. So what is the National Youth Observatory all about? Um, the National Youth Observatory is a government structure which was um, created in the framework of the three-year special, three <coughs> special youth plan, which was announced by the head of state or instituted by the head of state in 2016. So this um, uh, project of the National Youth Observatory was put in place to accompany this plan. What does the National Youth Observatory do? The National Youth Observatory stands as the port of entry okay. for any youth that has the intentions because you have to first of all understand that <coughs> if a youth does not manifest the desire okay. to be accompanied by the government, the government cannot, cannot oblige the young person. So the, the National Youth Observatory stands as a port of entry for en every youth that manifests that zeal or that desire to be accompanied by the government towards self-autonomy. So what um, uh, basically is um, the goal of the three-year special uh, youth plan is to uh, consolidate and enhance um, a high level of inclusiveness of the young people of Cameroon to, um, to, 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 to better develop Cameroon economically. You talk of youth showing intention and the desire. How will you know that somebody has the desire to be accompanied by the government? Uh, we understand that um, most youths have um, challenges, yeah. especially when it comes to financial, economic challenges. And um, uh, in, uh, of recent, um, what actually spurred up the uh, intentions of the head of state was the fact that apart from the financial and economic challenges, there were social challenges <coughs> that had to do with moral decadence. And, um, uh, the young people actually need the accompaniment of the state. But what happens is that most of the time they don't have the information. So once a young person is sensitized and has the information, we always find that they come in their numbers to be accompanied by the, by the government. The manifestation is their, um, the fact that they approach us right. once they have the information. When you see them coming, you understand that they actually have the need to be accompanied. We all know that at times people fake intentions and uh, desire to do something, meanwhile deep behind their brain, 
uh, they don't want really to do that. Are they not coming just for the finances and after that they fall back to their, to their moral decadence behavior? That is why um, the, the structure of accompaniment by the state this time differs a little bit of what used to be um, in the past years. What happens now is that the young person that benefits from many, maybe financial support is accompanied towards, the, towards his or her settlement. Uh, what I mean is that if you require for maybe like 20 million francs to set up a poultry project, yeah. you have to detail right, the, 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 um, the various periods uh, that goes with the creation the of the poultry, poultry project. Yeah. And based on those periods, based on the funding that corresponds to various periods, the government follows up, gives you what you need, but not the money. Okay. For instance, if you need um, uh, a portrait building and you say you need three months, the government makes sure that somebody constructs the portrait building, but with government funds, funds all right. not the youth that <coughs> asks for the project. Because what the youth needs, needs, needs basically is the project, the project yeah. not the money. Mm -hmm. So that's what happens now with the accompaniment. The accompaniment is from the orientation to the settlement. There are many young people who also want to run projects and don't have the competence. Okay. So what we do there is to orient them towards training. We have partnerships with um, the uh, um, chambers of, of uh, agriculture, yeah. chambers of commerce, okay. and other partners who are even uh, non-governmental organizations who come in to train young people um, who need training because they have expressed the need to run projects in some fields where they don't have the initial training. <clears throat> Created in 2016, we are ending 2018. What are the success recorded so far? Um, what you should understand with the National Youth Observatory, like I said, we register young people and we orientate them. Yeah. So um, we've registered so far about um, 600,000 young people. Okay. And um, any, every young person registered has had an orientation. Okay. Every young person registered has had an orientation because before you register, we have to know you, we have to know your background, we have to know what you want, and we orientate you towards, uh, based on your background and what you want, we give you an orientation. So once you are registering in the platform of the National Observatory, you have already received the orientation and it's very, very important. So for that, we have had that's about 600,000 orientations done already. And then, <clears throat> and then now, the, what we call, um, it's a term that we've taken from French, because it's difficult to have it directly in English, referencing. Okay. Referencing is, um, after orientation, we can now refer you to your partner if you have that competence or you have the profile. Yeah. I'll give you an example. Um, there are many um, structures that come towards us and they give, they give us some profiles of young people that they, they need. They need. Um, now we are working on um, a project for 200 youths to be sent to the chambers of agriculture because they've expressed the need to have 200 youths that will benefit from some um, um, free funding. Yeah. Yes, they're going to have funding for training. They're going to train them. So what happens is that after those 200 are trained, they come back to us, we mount their projects. Their projects are mounted at the level of uh, Pajeru. Okay. The Pajeru is another program that exists within the framework, the framework of the Ministry of Youth Affairs. And what they do is they accompany young people either in training or in the, um, the mounting of projects. So, so far we've had um, at least um, 2,000 projects mounted. Mounted. And um, uh, 2,000 projects mounted because there are some youths who have already the competence of mounting the projects. projects. So we've received um, so far about 4,000 projects that have been submitted. If you've been following maybe um, uh, events um, uh, about around the, uh, uh, the three-year special youth plan, yeah. you'll understand that in January, in, on the 24th of January, the uh, Minister of Youth Affairs launched the, the first phase yeah. of the funding I of know. about um, 3,000 young mm -hmm. persons and um, the funds that will be made available two installments i think there is a three there is a three billion cfa in first installment and about 1.5 
billion TFA in the second, uh, in second installment. So most of those projects are built by Pajay, but most of the uh, projects, before they go into projects, they'll get orientation from the National Youth Observatory. Okay. And then there are some partners who have asked, um, we've had some companies um, that need uh, young people to do, um, to offer some, to, to carry on um, some services. And um, we've orientated already about 250 All right. in that domain. And there are, um, we have also about 1,000 young people that have been uh, mobilized and sensitized on the needs or on the need of having a social insurance, insurance. coverage. Okay. And uh, the Ministry of Youth Affairs through um, the National Youth Observatory is paying for the uh, coverage for the first uh, uh, year. Yeah, okay. And the young person now can continue. It's what the same place called voluntary Savings. savings yeah. So it's a way of bringing the youth to be responsible, knowing that um, if you work, uh, if you can work and have maybe about three thousand francs a day, okay. you shouldn't just spend the money. You can save about a hundred francs. Yeah. At the end of the month, you have three thousand francs. You go and save it for your retirement. Mm -hmm. So everybody can save for their retirement, and those information are very important for the youth to have them now. You talked of uh, some sponsors that you've given out. Let me find out from you, Mr. Ivan Eta. If the government gives out those money, are the youth supposed to refund the money? Is it with interest or not? Um, it's very important because, um, uh, like I said, in yesteryears, the, there was a lot of confusion about how to use the, the money, money, how to return the money, how to refund the money. But you should understand that the three-year special youth plan, which has a budget of 102 billion serves that budget serves as a revolving fund okay it implies that the budget itself has to turn over and um, have a spillover okay so that many youth can benefit but the you know there's a committee at the level of the prime ministry which is in charge of the implementation of the three-year special youth plan so yeah. based on some information that we've had from that committee, the, um, the, 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 the funding has been um, uh, repartitioned at three levels. You have the first level which has to do with subventions. Subventions range from zero to about 1.5 okay. million. Subventions are non-refundable. Um, subventions are meant to help those um, petty uh, traders, uh, uh, traders yeah. to build up their trades and um, they are not refundable. But then there is an accompaniment to make sure that the money serves the purpose. The purpose. Yes. And then you have now the second um, level, which has to do with from 1.5 million to um, 10 million. 1.5 million to 10 million. It is um, a grant that is refunded with no interest rate so if you take eight million after a while when you once your project is flourishing you start you start reimbursing the money but they make it very light I so see. when you're reimbursing it doesn't have uh, an impact on your project and uh, you reimburse just the exact amount, amount that you received now for projects uh, for funding between 10 and 25 million it's a project that you refund, but with an interest rate of 6%. 6%? Yes, 6%. Okay. Well, I think there's a logic behind it, because the subventions that go should be made, met up somewhere. somewhere. So maybe the 6% can help cover the subvention, so that we keep having a fund that revolves. Okay, Mr. Eta Ojang, yeah. Ivan, uh, we are going to follow this report by uh, Terry Ejege, talking about uh, exploiting new pathways. Tere Jege has this to tell us. Au moment où la rentrée académique a de la peine à démarrer dans nos universités d'État, le ministère de l'Enseignement supérieur, par le truchement de la direction des accréditations universitaires et de la qualité, organise un séminaire de validation du guide national 
des performances et de comparabilité des institutions universitaires. C'est un document qui va aider les universitaires à atteindre certains objectifs dans leurs activités. Normalement, on vous fait par exemple un budget pour former 100 étudiants. Mais comment les former de Quelle qualité Et donc, avec les objectifs bien précis, vous les décidez à l'avance que pour cette, cette année, on va tourner tant, on va sortir tant nombre d'étudiants de telle qualité et vous lancez maintenant dans le travail. Comme son nom l'indique, ce document qui entrera en fonction dans trois mois s'il est validé, vise avant tout à guider les responsables des institutions universitaires en ce sens qu'il permet non seulement de classer l'information susceptible de mesurer l'effort consenti, mais aussi de disposer d'indicateurs permettant de questionner leurs performances sur le plan international. La dernière décennie a révélé que l'adoption de ce type de référentiel a généralement suscité des débats méthodologiques inhérents à la pertinence de l'indicateur choisi. Aussi, nous semble-t-il semble judicieux que la communauté universitaire nationale s'accorde sur le contenu de ces référentiels. À chacun d'entre de s'en servir pour booster le rendement de son établissement en termes de formation. Cela apportera certainement une plus-value au fameux système licence master-doctorat qui commence à présenter quelques limites. Thanks very much, Thierry Jege, for that excellent report you just made on their on exploiting their new pathway. Viewers of Seven News Television, if you're just switching on your set, this is your program, The Expats. Today, we are talking on the role of the National Youth Observatory. With us here is Mr. Eta Ojang Ivan, who is the head of department of information and sensitization. Hello. Hello, Mr. Yeah, I'm uh, Mr. Ivan. Yeah. Before we follow that report, we're talking about the, the interest rate of 6% to cover the subvention. So how long does it take for somebody to refund this money? Well, you know, um, what is important is that um, the government, um, through the three-year special youth plan, is trying to make things very light okay. for young people. Um, so the interest rate is very flexible. Yeah. And you know, projects differ from one another. That is why in each project you have um, a specialist that accompanies a young person. It is once the project starts being profitable, profitable. that the youth starts paying the interest rate. Okay. And it is so because at every stage of the development of the project, the person, the expert that is responsible to accompany the young person has to always inform the government of the evolution of the project. Yeah. So if the project does not or has some um, problems, problems yeah. they have to identify the problems and try to resolve them. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, you were talking about the goals. What is the mission of the National Youth Observatory? Uh, the, the mission of the National Youth Observatory, like I said, if you look at the nature, it's nature, like the path of entry. Entry, yeah. So the mission of the National Youth Observatory is to register young people, first of all, sensitize young people, okay. mobilize young people, yeah. register them, orientate them, mm -hmm. and then put them in link with those projects. I see. With those institutions, be it governmental or non-governmental, Government. that have a direct impact on the social or economic development of the young people. That sounds interesting. You've talked so much about the three years development plan. What type of project does your government finance? Is it agricultural? Um, the, uh, um, the, when the head of state announced the the plan, 
there were three um, major fields. You have the agricultural sector. Yeah. You should understand that when we talk about the agricultural sector, it does not limit only to agriculture with the F. All right. It has to do with uh, poultry farming. It has to do with um, animal husbandry. Right, yeah. It has to so that it, I'm talking about the big agriculture. agriculture. All right. And then you have now also um, uh, innovative and uh, computer um, Engineering. projects yeah. that it has to do with um, the development of applications, um, the development of uh, the, the digital digital world. And then you also have now with the, uh, the, the, the third, the third um, big group is um, the furnishing of or the um, services, services, provision yeah. of services. Yes, so it has to do like um, hairdressers, um, commercial motorbikes, Bikes. riders, and those, who, those young people who provide services. Yeah. Okay, uh, you talked of over 4,000 projects. What are the criteria to select the people? Um, the criteria to select um, the projects are very simple. All right. Um, the, the first has to do with the person. All right. You have to be a Cameroonian. I see. Of course, you have to be a Cameroonian. And, um, and since, uh, like, the the uh, the title of the plan says it's yeah. a special youth, youth development plan. You have to be within the age limit of the young person as defined as the law of Cameroon, which is between fifteen and thirty five. Oh, right. And then you have to be of good moral rectitude. That has to do with the person, yeah. not the project. <laughs> Concerning the project, you're supposed to have and there's supposed to be an adequation between the person that has a project mm -hmm. and the project itself. For instance, you can't do, um, uh, I'll say like um, um, planting cultivation, you'll be an expert in planting cultivation, and you come and develop a project in poultry farming. There is an inadequation. Inadequation, that's true. That. So there must be that adequation. That's why we propose training. For those who don't want to do what they've studied, want to do something else, you do a training in that in that domain, and then you come and ask for funding. And then now, you look at now the locality where you want to install the project. Has there been any um, feasibility studies okay. that has been done? Can the project be profitable? Those are the aspects that have been. But those ones now, okay. you need, there is always a committee that is put in place with experts to look into the profitability and the doability of the projects. When you talk of training, can uh, the government support somebody into a professional training before the person coming out with a project? Um, that is um, why I talked about um, the partners that we have. Yeah. Because the idea about partnership is to create a possibility of giving the same uh, opportunity or given the same training but at uh, preferential rates. rates. So the government goes into partnership with institutions if the government does not have those institutions so that the government can subvent the training of the young persons. And now in the case where the government has the institutions, like I talked about the, uh, the uh, Chambers Agriculture, Agriculture which is planning to train 200 young people at Bingela. You know, Bingela is a government uh, training institute where yeah. they train um, young people in agriculture, techniques of um, uh, animal house boundary and all that. So this is it's, it's free. This, this, these are trainings that can cost from 600 to 900,000. But when you hear it, it's a scholarship. It's so a scholarship. It's a scholarship for 200 young people. It's wonderful. So that's how um, this is the, that's what the government does through this three-year special plan. There are young people who benefit from training, who will not benefit maybe from funding. from funding. Some could be lucky to benefit from training and, and funding. From funding. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So that's what. Is. Talking about the special youth three years plan, we are already in the second year, created in 2016. This is the second year. 
So in 2019 will be the third year. Is this something that will continue or will stop after 2019? Okay, thank you. There are two aspects in the question that you just asked. First of all, is whether it's actually started in 2016, yeah. and then secondly, is whether it's going to continue. Continue. Um, it's um, a plan that was instituted in 2016. Yeah. But there are measures that are supposed to be put in place before the plan the goes plan operational. operational yeah? So um, the services of the Prime Ministry had worked on those measures and that is why in um, 2017 the Prime Minister created a committee, a committee to work on the implementation of, of the, the project. Yeah. So the committee has um, all the answers on when the plan actually it's goes operational. operational. See, so if the committee tells us that, okay, the plan, the plan goes operational in 2019, so we're going to start counting from 2019 to 2021 yeah. or 22. And then now whether the plan is going to be um, just for three years or it's going to continue, like I said, if the plan stops after three years, what do we do with the money that the projects the project, have yeah. uh, refunded? So in my opinion, the plan is to boost, but then, the, uh, the plan is going to create um, uh, structures that will continue working after the plan. For instance, the National Aid Observatory was born because of the plan, the plan, to accompany the plan. It's true that the National Aid Observatory is a plan, it was a structure that had been planned since the Ministry of Youth Affairs. But with the, with the birth of this plan, the National Aid Observatory just came, also had life. So the National Aid Observatory would continue to orientate, would continue to register, would continue to give feedback of the youth that have benefited from government sponsors or from private sponsors. So these structures are going to continue existing. There are structures in the Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of um, <clears throat> uh, Ministry of um, Minipia, yeah. Ministry of uh, Animal Husbandry. Husband, yeah. there, there are structures there, even Ministry of uh, Post and Telecommunications, that accompany young people yeah. in the framework of the special Youth plan. Special, youth plan. special Youth Plan is a government tool. It's not just the Ministry of Youth Affairs. Youth, okay. Why the Ministry of Youth Affairs is at the center is because yeah. we have the targets, but then we have the experts in other ministries. ministries. So those structures are going to continue to exist even after the, the, the end of the three years. So the, it's going to continue, but in another form. What happens if somebody collects over 25 million safer francs and at the end the person is unable to reimburse the money? It's a situation that is difficult <laughs> to, to, predict. Put, to, to produce. <laughs> okay. It's a situation that is difficult to happen because nobody is going to have 25 million. You're going to have your project, that's it. And if you say you're not continuing the project, they install another young person in the project and it continues. Right. Your, because your project has to do not with you having the money. The money. It has to do with maybe implantation of the site, mm -hmm. buying machines and all that. So those things are going to stay there. And you have somebody that accompanies you step by step to make sure that whatever needs to be realized is realized. If you say, okay, you are resigning, you don't want to continue the project, they get another youth that has a profile and it continues with the project. And what if the project is in, in, in somebody's land? How will the youth come and manage the project in, in another person's land? That is, um, those are the uh, aspects that they take into consideration before they give any funding. Yeah. That is, if the project, uh, you're talking about, let's take an example of an agricultural project. Yeah. And uh, maybe you funded the project, you've created maybe um, hectares of land, and you say you, don't, you no longer want to continue. Well, I think there are, there are mechanisms, even um, um, in contract, law of contract, that um, knows how to settle those kind of problems. If you have a land, and somebody else has a property on your land, I think they can have a, a means that the government can take its property okay. without uh, maybe causing other prejudices. Okay, thanks very much, Mr. Itang. I, wait, I pray that we follow this report. Okay. Viewers of Seven News, we are talking about youths, the role of the National Youth Observatory. Carol Tepa made this report about, the, about studying in the rural milieu, how difficult it is. Let's get this report by Carol Taper.
salle de classe abandonnée dans la broussaille ou encore celle construite en terre battue, à Zili, localité située non loin de Gulmedouga, dans le département du Haut-Nyon, région de l'Est, démontre à suffisance que les infrastructures de base de la plupart des établissements scolaires dans l'arrière-pays ne sont pas appropriées. Sur le plan infactuel, nous avons un problème de bâtiment et on n'a que deux bâtiments qui, qui regroupent les, les différents niveaux. Niveau 1, et niveau 1, niveau 2 et niveau 3. Donc on a un manque d'infrastructures scolaires dans les salles de classe et aussi les, 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 les latrines pour que les enfants se, se mettent à l'aise. Malgré ces infrastructures inappropriées, le taux de scolarisation diffère d'une région à l'autre. Dans l'extrême nord, 18% de la population est composée d'enfants âgés de 3 à 5 ans et 17% de 6 à 14 ans. On constate que le taux d'inscription scolaire dans cette région est le plus faible du Cameroun. Là-bas, comme excuse, les, les enfants ne sont pas euh, tellement éveillés comme euh, d'autres. Mais on, on en trouve quand même aussi des enfants éveillés, hyper intelligents, mais ça ne suit pas correctement. On ne peut pas dire qu'on a des facilités de faire son travail là-bas, comme on peut avoir les facilités de faire son travail ici. On rencontre beaucoup de difficultés. De difficultés, par exemple, d'infrastructures. Tu vas trouver des enfants, des salles de classe où les enfants s'asseyent à même le sol. Moi, j'ai même enseigné en plein air. Hein. Quand je vous dis à Winala, j'ai été appelée à enseigner en plein air. Bon, au centre de Yagua, là, j'enseignais dans la salle de classe, mais les élèves étaient, euh, étaient au sol. Cependant, ville, cas de Yaoundé, la capitale, tout un autre décor dans ces établissements scolaires de l'enseignement privé pour bénéficier d'une éducation de qualité. Le gouvernement à fort à faire en vue de s'arrimer à la stratégie continentale de l'éducation en Afrique adoptée par l'Union africaine et dont les sept objectifs visent à développer les politiques qui assurent à tous et de façon équitable et permanente un environnement serein et propice à l'apprentissage afin d'accroître l'accès à une éducation de qualité à tous les niveaux d'éducation. Yes, education is the key to success, Carol Tepa, as you rightly said. Viewers of Seven News Television, this is your program, The Expert, if you are just switching on your television set. We are talking on the role of the National Youth Observatory. With us is the head of the Department of Information and Sensitization of that organ. He is no other person than Mr. Ivan Eta Ojang. Mr. Ivan, yes, you followed that report uh, made by Carol Tepa talking of education in the villages. Yeah. How is your project helping those at the rural milieu? Um, the, the project of the National Youth Observatory um, has this um, particularity that it covers the national territory. Okay. And in order to do this, um, the Ministry of Youth Affairs that possesses already some structures which we call multipurpose youth empowerment, empowerment centers. Center. Okay. They are, these structures are located in all the subdivisions of Cameroon, the 360 subdivisions, in all the 58 divisions, divisions. and in all the 10 regions. And apart from that, there are two reference centers, one in Yaoundé and one in Douala. So, the National Youth Observatory is using these centers to easily get in contact with the young people. Every head of center is the head of the unit of the National Youth Observatory. So you see, we cover the whole of the national territory. And why is this so? It's because we um, have the intention of fighting Rural exodus. You can keep centralizing things in Yaoundé or Douala, which are the biggest cities, and you forget about the rural areas. And most of these young people in these rural areas 
have the advantage that they still have their lands that they can use maybe for agriculture, don't need to move to town to, town. to look for jobs where they don't have the competence. So what we do is the young person registers in his locality, identifies a project in his locality. Mm -hmm. If they are partners in his locality, that's fine. If there are no partners in the locality, then we go in now for intermediation on how the, go the young person can get um, accompanied. accompanied. Yeah. And then the, government, the young person is funded in his locality. And that is why you see the system of funding that has been adopted has to do with the kind of regionalization. So if they are about to fund 1,000 projects, the projects are funded based on the registration at hand. So the percentages are given based on the registration. Mm -hmm. We have um, about, like we have FANOR, it has a very great number of registered yes, uh, people. Youths, okay. followed by the center, and then you have the uh, literal. So when the funding is done, you take it to consideration, the number of persons that are registered. So it will not be surprising that most youths are funded in the far north. Yeah. That youths are funded more in the far north than in the central, in central region. region. And then secondly, it has to do with the nature of the project. Okay. And it has to do with where the project is implanted. implanted. What, like I said, the, the, the issue is to encourage young people not to leave their environment in order to search for greener pastures elsewhere but we encourage them to stay in their environments and develop projects that can benefit them in that same environment. What do you do with the youth who have projects where they are living in an inaccessible area where vehicles or bikes cannot go there? We, like I said, we have um, 360 subdivisions, subdivisions yeah. covered. covered. And now it means you may be talking about some villages, villages that yeah. are a little bit maybe yeah, enclaved. enclaved. Yeah. That cannot. What we do is we work in partnership with the um, administrative structures. Okay. The administrative structures have also, like I'm talking about people who is the job mm -hmm. for us, like the uh, divisional officers, subdivisional, uh, the divisional officers, the senior divisional officers. They work also with the uh, local, authorities. local authorities, like the traditional rulers, like the mayors, the uh, the um, members of parliament, some elites, and all that. So what happens is that we don't. We first of all have a map of the villages of every subdivision. Okay. Yes. And so when the projects are being collected. But when the youths are being sensitized or informed, we make sure that all the youths of the various villages have the same level of information, information. so that nobody is left out. Okay. So that's what we do basically. And um, in um, areas, we understand that there are lots and lots of challenges for some of our col collaborators who are in these enclaved areas to move from one area to the other. But it was very, um, at times when we go down to the field, we are very impressed by the fact that they, they look for means and they are supported at times by the traditional rulers to come to their chiefdoms or to, 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 to talk about the National mm -hmm. Observatory and to get young people registered and they get their projects and they, they work with them in collaboration. So how many youths do you expect to register each year in your organ so far? We have uh, the obligation to register 500,000 young persons. 500,000 young persons every yes. year. We have the obligation to register 500,000 young persons every year. And um, the young persons don't have the same objectives. Yeah. There are some young persons that want maybe internships. Mm -hmm. They have already finished their training, they need internships, and we are waiting them where they can get internships. There are some young people who need training, like I said. That's on young people who want to offer voluntary services. services. That's on young people who need um, a training in moral rearmament and civic education. Mm -hmm. So we we identify the needs of those young people and they are orientated towards their, their needs. You talked of over 500,000 500, persons each year. Yeah. And uh, according to statistics, 
November, 2000, November 2018, the 30th, the statistics stands at 625,000 youth registered. How many, let me come back to that, how many have you informed this year out of the 625,000? How many have we informed? Sensitized, trained. Um, like I said, the, the uh, training is not the National Youth Observatory that does it. Does it, okay. Moral rearmament and civic education is carried out by the Minister of Youth, by the agency okay. in charge of the um, National um, Civic Service civic, okay, agency. agency yeah. Um, for participation, participation and development. In development. Yeah. And um, they have trained uh, a couple of, uh, they've trained some thousands of volunteers and some thousands of uh, conscripts. Cons uh, I don't have the exact um, figures. And um, like I said, we've orientated um, some young people to, to structures like chambers of agriculture. And um, some young people, some young people, like in the level of the regions, in the level of regions, we also have some partners at the level of the regions. Young people have been oriented at the level of region. Right now, we are making um, uh, an annual report, an annual report that will carry all those statistics and they will be made available to everybody who wants to verify the at level of achievement of. The, uh, of the missions of the National Observatory this year. However, um, it's not without challenges or without difficulties that all this is done. That is why it's not possible or seems impossible right now to orientate all the 500,000 that we register, we should register in a year. Or that is why we're still having 600,000 registered between 2017 and, and the end of 2018. In actual fact, there was supposed to be 1 million. So we are working on about 60% um, realization of the objectives. That sounds interesting. Before coming back to you, Mr. Ojang Eta, Ivan, I would like us to follow this report made by Briz Gozo talking about cocoa farms in Cameroon, how to improve them. Briz Gozo. Il était impératif de se doter des cylindrées de génération récente pour braver l'hostile forêt que regorge le département de la Sanaga maritime afin de mettre à la disposition de ces 75 jeunes venus des villages Songjem et Sipandan dans l'arrondissement de Massoc Son Lolo, des kits d'amorçage offerts gracieusement par l'équipe du Conseil interprofessionnel du cacao et du café, conduite par le président de l'organisation Apollinaire Gouy qui n'a pas manqué de délivrer le message du CICC en droite ligne avec les ambitions de l'organisation dans le processus d'accompagnement des entrepreneurs agricoles en herbe et la revitalisation des filières cacao et café. Nous attendons d'eux, c'est qu'ils concrétisent sur le terrain, sur le plan pratique, le, ce, euh, ce qu'ils vont apprendre, parce qu'ils vont pendant un an apprendre beaucoup de choses. Théoriquement, pratiquement, les deux sont associés et, et c'est ce que nous attendons pour eux-mêmes et bien entendu pour le plus grand bonheur du Conseil interprofessionnel. Qui nous, cela nous permettra de continuer à faire ailleurs là où il n'y a pas encore assez de demandes. Un don sans contrepartie à ces jeunes agriculteurs sélectionnés et formés pendant 72 heures dans le cadre du programme New Generation, initié par l'interprofession et qui vise dans cet arrondissement à faire éclore environ 225 hectares de plantations nouvelles dans la perspective de booster la production annuelle de cacao par le biais de la jeunesse de ce bassin de production. L'avenir est très radieux. Vous savez, euh, nous étions trempés dans un obscurantisme total. Ce projet arrive et nous galvanise. Nous village était de peuplé. Maintenant, on a un regain d'espoir. On se dit, grâce à ce projet, nous pouvons être des entrepreneurs agricoles. Nous pouvons être autonomes. Et pour cela, nous pouvons aussi assurer, pour ainsi, un avenir à nos enfants. 
un satisfait de ses bénéficiaires à la suite de la remise de ces packages dont l'objectif est clair, celui de faciliter la production des fèves dans les champs de ces jeunes cacaoculteurs des deux villages pilotes de l'arrondissement de massoxon lolo I salute you, Brice Gozok, for that report uh, talking about cocoa. Viewers of Seven News, we are gradually drawing our cutting close. But if you are just switching on your set, this is the program, The Experts. We are talking about the role of the National Youth Observatory. Mr. Otan, there is something like the Youth Biometric Card. What is it all about? Okay, the youth biometric uh, card is um, a, an instrument that was um, instituted by the by the government in order to enhance the status of the youth and um, to facilitate the access of the youth to certain economic and social services. So, what conditions does uh, one fulfil in order to have this card? I'll still come back again to the definition of the youth. It's a youth card, so you should be between 15 and 35 years old, be a Cameroonian, and with proofs. So you have to maybe come with a national, with um, um, a certified um, photocopy of your national ID card, ID card yeah. and with a certified copy of your birth certificate, birth certificate to testify of your age. Yeah, Those right. are the um, conditions that are necessary. That you have to fulfill to have a card. So, what are the advantages having this card? There are lots of advantages that the card is going to produce. The card is still at its inception, so it's at the, at the bed. So, um, for now, you don't feel the advantages. All right. But then, the card is going to permit the young people to benefit from some services at the preferential rate. Oh. We've had partnerships with partners already. Um, like, I'll give an example like uh, Otoe Call Planet. We've signed a partnership with Toyota Planet, mm -hmm. and they're ready to take off forty percent. Wow, that sounds interesting. Yes, forty percent for every youth that has a car. And you see, we've, we we go to those sectors where we understand that the young people have interest in them. Young people need to drive. Mm -hmm. Most of them want to become drivers. Some of them can possess their own cars. Some of them young civil young civil servants who just uh, need to buy cars to go to work and all that. Forty percent reduction. We have um, hospitals. We have hospitals like uh, with the uh, uh, gynecological obstetric hospital. In Goso, yeah. They decided to reduce or to suppress every fear of consultation or uh, as concerns um, gynecological consultation yeah. for young girls between the ages of 15 and 20. Oh. We've had some other partnerships with uh, like Stacy, what you call the bus, the bus, yeah. the bus, and we're still working on how they're going to reduce the fares for young people using the bus. You know, many young people use the bus, the bus. because it's sort of a cheap, and the bus is ready to make it cheaper for those who have the youth card. So those are the advantages that the youth card would have. And then that's for the youth. But then for the state, it's going to permit the state to understand that the youth have needs. I so see. it's like a tool, a decision-making tool. It's going to be this. You know, the youth have needs from the statistics of the number of the youth that were going to, to get the card. We made the state to understand, and still will see how to alleviate the situations of the youth. But then to those who are partners, partners okay. it's going to give them um, like uh, an image of a citizen company. For instance, if a company does not gain profit all the time, but offers also services for young people because it it, um, it can it wants to show its dimension of bringing social accompaniment to young people. It becomes like a citizen company. Yeah. And then it's also a possibility that this, the company can even increase in its sales. Like in Photo Planet, my, most young people will never go to Photo Planet and have 40% discount. That's true. There is a tendency. That maybe all the young people go yeah, to, we'll to and the other uh, uh, what I call what I call driving schools will close up. So there are <laughs> lots and lots of advantages around the youth card. But the main thing is that we are trying to alleviate the situation of the young people 
to make them inclusive, to make them participative in the development of Cameroon? Uh, does this card have an expiring date? The card does. It has an expiry date. The card lasts for five years. All right. Yes. But once you go beyond 35 years, it automatically expires. Experience. All right. Uh, thanks very much, Mr. Ivan Etar. Uh, Ojang for coming to talk with to us concerning the National Youth Observatory. I think I should be the one thanking you, Mr. Takambiso, and thanking the whole uh, team of Seven News for giving us this opportunity once more to reach out to the young people of Cameroon. Okay, I hope next time you will not hesitate coming back here to enlighten the public about what you are doing. No, it's been wonderful. Okay, uh, viewers of Seven News Television, like I said earlier, we were drawing the curtain close, but now we are drawing the curtain close. This program is a success, not only because of Takang Bison, who is the presenter, but due to the people you don't see. You have the editors, you have the wonderful cameraman who has been here with me. You also have the guy behind operating the buttons for you to have the wonderful images. Don't go away. The expert is drawing it curtains close, but not seven news. Keep on watching seven news as interesting programs are coming up. The news comes up at 7 p.m. God bless you, as I love you all.